Apple CarPlay. You can basically find this on pretty much any modern day vehicle nowadays. Lamborghinis have them. They literally have it right there in the instrument cluster. Jaguar, Porsche, Audi, GM, Ford, Honda, you get the picture. If your vehicle has Apple CarPlay support, I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything there is to know about this amazing head unit because it could do so much more than just navigate maps, listen to music, because just like our iPhones, there are some ways you can customize this to your personal preference. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all that and more in this video. So if you are new to the Apple CarPlay world or you never really bothered in going through the settings and see what you could adjust, just continue watching this video as I'm gonna get you informed so you can step up your Apple CarPlay games to the next level. Let's begin. So this is the home page. In this background, this wallpaper, if you don't know how to change it, it's really easy. Simply just go into your settings, go into wallpaper, and here you have a variety of different styles to choose from. You may also go to the traditional solid black color or the iconic iOS 13 look. But the one with the color shifting is brand new for CarPlay. And as soon as you select one, to select. And above here, you also have the ability to adjust the appearance. So I have mine always at the dark, but if you leave it on automatic, depending on the certain time of day, during the sunrise period, it's gonna give you this white background like this. And then when the sun started going down, it's gonna switch to always dark. Give you this dimmer screen experience so it doesn't blind you as you're driving. Another awesome tip to definitely be aware of is these icons, just like your iPhone, you can actually rearrange them and reorganize them to your liking. So right now, my homepage, I have the common apps that I typically find myself using the most, like the phone, I actually use Apple Maps, and YouTube Music is my go-to music source, and Spotify is like my podcast source. If you wanna rearrange these, you don't do it on the menu itself, on the head unit. What you gotta do is take out your phone, go into your settings, scroll down to general, go into CarPlay, and here you're gonna have your selection of different cars profiles from past connected times. So it doesn't help the fact that you are unable to change the name, but if you have like one or two cars, you shouldn't really have that many issues to identify which vehicle is which, but by tapping on either or, there is a customized choice right above. Tap on it. And here's where you can actually not just remove some of these apps. Let's say, for example, we never use Amazon Music. Simply remove it, and now it's down here. So you can remove some apps, or you tap the plus to re-add them. If you want to reorganize them, simply just hold down the little lines that are in the corner right here, and just move them like so. And that's how you basically can rearrange your homepage. So keep moving these and rearrange them to your liking. Now, other things to quickly highlight since we're still in this menu is where it says allow CarPlay while unlocked. Basically what this allows you to do as soon as you have your phone connected to your head unit, your vehicle, by having this mode, it means the phone will automatically connect and allow access to your phone to the vehicle without requiring you to face ID or unlock your phone. But if you go ahead and disable this, now if you plug in your phone, all it's just gonna do is just charge your device until you unlock it and then it will enable CarPlay. This is useful to do if you have two USB ports connected to the head unit so that you or your spouse or your passenger, their phone doesn't automatically connect. So the one that wants to unlock their device, it's gonna be the first primary one that's gonna be using CarPlay. Hopefully you could catch my drift on what I mean by that. Now, depending on your vehicle, you could always just say, hey Siri, and Siri will actually start listening. Some older vehicles, they have the speak icon on the steering wheel, where you can just simply press on the speak icon and Siri will begin listening. Another quick trick is this little icon that will take you to the homepage. I'm gonna go ahead and blur this, of course. If you press and hold on it, it will also toggle Siri. Now, some nifty features that's not really talked about as much about Siri, and Siri got some additional tools. Where in the past, if you reply to a message, Siri will only reply using dictation, and sometimes dictation isn't really good, especially when it accidentally mix a swear word in your sentence. Instead of allowing Siri to do dictation, you can always just request Siri to send a, an actual voice message instead. So let's say, for example, send voice message to Mark. Okay, recording. How are you? Great. Send it to Mark. And Siri literally just recorded a voice memo instead of sending a text dictation. This process is much quicker to reply, especially in a hurry during rush hour. Another additional goodie that Siri could also do is let's say, for example, you set a destination. Let's go ahead and set one up real quick. You may already be familiar by tapping this little plus icon, you could share your ETA. You may also do the same thing by using Siri. Share ETA with Gloria. And now, 
Siri share the ETA of our arrival to that person we just requested to send it to. Now this homepage, this is the main main homepage. Here you not only see the music that's currently playing, the it also will display the turn right here as well as a little preview of the mini map so you get an understanding where to turn and right here are going to be your your most recent apps that you had open and on top you have a little status of the time wi-fi signal as well as reception self-explanatory really as well as your north and south it's going to be right here on the little circle of course it's going to be blurry on your end due to privacy concerns of course but let's say for example you don't want to use apple maps well you could always just up open a substitute like google maps as a fine example to set a destination and now google maps is on that little window and yes we have two maps running at the same time so you could have multiple map applications running side by side but it does become annoying as both voice assistants are going to be talking at the same time so let's quickly just end that and yes if you're concerned Waze also is supported but the cool thing about i like about google maps is that you actually have voice controls right here as well and since we're still covering map if you tap search if you're searching for an address there is an on key keyboard you can enter the street address or the name of that location now an interesting note about google maps now when using navigation and the voice assistant's kind of annoying or you want to adjust the audio of just a voice assistant but not the audio that you're listening to like a podcast or your music playlist when it's actually speaking let's go ahead and unmute let it speak you can raise the volume or lower it as it says right here prompt volume it varies on the vehicle but most modern day vehicles allows you to do that now back here in our settings you do have the do not disturb option whenever carplay is enabled now whenever somebody tries messaging you they're going to immediately get an auto reply saying that you're driving and you're unable to respond until you are at a safe place so if you are a driver that's very easy to get distracted i would recommend enabling that if you drive responsibly there's really no need of course appearance where we covered at suggestions series suggestions and dashboard what basically this allows you to do is let's say for example we have an appointment at so-and-so time at so-and-so location as soon as you get in your vehicle siri will actually show you a little card right here or when you activate your maps suggesting that there's an appointment coming by would you like me to set it as a destination you just simply tap and siri will set everything up for you basically siri would just intervene a little bit more and notice and show you some recommendations this could also be a driving habit that you usually do if you go back to work at a certain time to go back home siri will automatically suggest if you like to go home and set that destination and that's it another setting you could adjust on apple carplay that's in the settings is to show album artwork when this is enabled basically if you leave a track playing you're going to be in control of the album artwork so right now i turn i turn it off so it's only giving us the title of the album as well as the song but if we go back and enable that it shows us the album artwork right there on the side i like to have it enabled because it's it looks cool and notice that this is I am using a third-party app, so this feature it works on all third-party music streaming services, not just Apple's. Now switching back to our phone, right here, if you bring out your control center, this icon basically just indicates you, you are using Apple CarPlay. Now if you have an Apple Watch and you are using navigation on Apple CarPlay, you may find it annoying that sometimes it gives you a haptic tap on your wrist whenever you're approaching a turn. Even though Siri is learning you right here on the head unit, there really isn't a need to have that push notification on your wrist. If that becomes a problem, you can always just hop on your phone and go on to the Apple Watch app and just scroll down to where you see your maps. Down here where it says turn alerts, just go ahead and disable driving with CarPlay or driving in general. And now when you're using navigation with Apple Maps, it's no longer gonna send you a haptic tap on your wrist. This is a personal preference. I like it because it has saved me a couple of times from getting distracted and missing my turn. Other important things to also be aware of is let's say, for example, you don't like it that your notifications will pop up right here whenever you receive a text message. There is a setting that you can go ahead and disable. If you don't like it, notifications here on the display where your passengers could also see it on who's texting you. And to do this, simply just hop into your iPhone settings, scroll down to notifications, and depending on the app, you could do this on calendars or reminders, but we're just going to use Messenger as an example. I mean message. So here's message. Tap on it. And right here where it says show in CarPlay, this is where you could disable that. So no longer will show up little notification cards whenever somebody texts you. Another cool feature that's integrated on Apple Maps for CarPlay is that whenever you put your vehicle on park, Apple Maps will actually send a pin mark 
on the map where your vehicle was last parked. So it basically will allow you to see your last known parked location on your phone so you don't lose it in the parking lot. To go ahead and set that up, once more, you need to go into your settings on your iPhone, scroll down to maps, and scroll down to where you see show parking location. When this is enabled, basically, again, it'll detect that you disconnected your phone from Apple CarPlay. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna mark that location because that's the exact point where your vehicle was parked. So it makes relocating it in a parking lot very easy. Other than that, I mean, you could still take screenshots of the head unit by doing that. As you notice, it took two screenshots of the our iPhone's homepage as well as Apple CarPlay. And there we have it. If you got some good useful information, don't just simply leave this video a like, but also get subscribed. I basically cover a lot of tech videos, very similar to this, where I go in depth on showing new ways to get the most out of that device. If you have a Ford motor vehicle, and if you're wondering if there's a wireless version to connect your iPhone to your head unit, there is, as I go ahead and cover this cool nifty device that will actually allow you to do that. If you want to know more about that device, you can go ahead and watch this video over here as so I show you exactly how that little adapter works. And in that video over there, that's just a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.